three, two, one. Hey, I'm Parker Curtis. I'm Matthew Gates, and welcome back to another IPM episode from the Homegrown Garden. So today we're gonna to be talking about where we're at in the garden. I got a lot of bugs for us to look at, a lot of good stuff and some not so good stuff. So we're gonna be talking about uh, when to use biocontrols, how to not kill the good stuff when you're trying to get rid of the bad stuff. So we're gonna walk and talk and show you what we got. All right, so over in this little living soil bed here, this plant's getting it a little worse than this one, but I think I got some mites going on. The problem I'm having is I don't want to spray these down and kill the spiders and the stuff that I want to preserve. So I know I talked to you last week about uh, using some predatory mites here. Yeah, that's right. So if you have something like spider mites, there are a lot of options out there to consider. Uh, some of them are a little bit more exotic, but one of the most popular things that people like to use are the persimilis mites, which are these small red mites. They're um, very commonly available in commercial settings um, and also for home growers for that matter too. Yeah, and between that and some of the, I think you said they were mealy bug killers with the, uh, it's a species of ladybug. So I'm gonna order two, uh, you know, the, the predatory mites and those mealy bug killers and see if we can release them without having to spray everything down again. So I was spraying, the, uh, I was spraying these plants down consistently but it seems like I've uh, we've gotten ahead of me. So now that I have things that I don't want to kill, I think that's a better option as far as biodiversity and controlling these populations. What's also nice that if you do end up getting like a moderate uh, population of spider mites, those persimilis mites do really good when it's really hot, which it is right now. Mm -hmm. And they're, their bio control is because they can overmatch the spider mite population, assuming you put enough in. like requisitionally for the population you're controlling. So they'll overmatch, they'll overpopulate, and they'll, they'll kill the spider mites. Whereas maybe some other generalists that you might have in the environment locally, yeah, maybe it'll munch on a spider mite or two, but it won't have the severe impact that um, a verified biocontrol agent mm. does. Yeah, well, there's, as we're walking around here, I, I mean, I'm seeing uh, some of those orb weavers that we had last season. There's uh, jumping spiders and things hunting, and we've got little uh, baby caterpillars. Uh, <laughs> this uh, is a little grasshopper, here. yeah. So I found a couple of those, and those are gonna be growing uh, quite a bit in the next couple of months. And then look, I think we got some jumping spiders over here. Oh yeah, yeah, we do. So yeah, between the, the ones, oh, there he goes between the ones running around and hunting stuff and the ones with webs. There's all kinds of cool stuff in here. Yeah. So if I was gonna be spraying stuff like Azimax or the plant therapy, I, I don't wanna kill some of these things. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then over, I guess we'll try to feed this guy to something too, huh? Oh yeah. So we got the uh, straw bales going. Jump right into the web, buddy. There you go. There, come on, get dinner. And that's how it's done. So yeah, even in this small area, that uh, orb weaver that had laid a couple of egg casings, I got about 20 of those baby spiders here. So between some of the flying insects around here. They're putting in quite a bit of work and they're all eating quite well. I'm seeing a lot of dead flies, honestly. And while those aren't like a super, you know, overt pest for cannabis, mm. it does allow them to get bigger and does allow them to feed on the other things that might be a problem. Like I see we had a swallowtail here. Uh, also not a huge issue, uh, generally speaking, but uh, again, you do get moths sometimes in the greenhouse. These aren't moths, these are butterflies. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I put some, I try to get some, they're actually little pool noodles to try to bridge this gap. This is kind of an odd build here, but I uh, still need to tighten this up a bit more. But yeah, the, uh, the flies, I think, you know, I'm using the fish emulsion and a lot of organic fertilizers. So between that and these straw bales, they are loving getting in here. So, but yeah, if anything, it's good spider food. Yeah, and you know, a lot of the uh, plants that you've also selected here, um, with a lot of these small little florets, like over here, like um, a lot of these flies, we think of them as pests and indeed they can be, but they're also really adroit pollinators too. So in that way, the, the attraction of those flies is gonna feed your, your spider population. 
Yeah, I've seen that up front too because I got the passion flowers and the milkweed oh, and yeah. stuff. And um, you know, it's the middle of summer, so a lot of flies in the yard. And, and I've seen them, uh, you know, all over these flowers and stuff. So you'll you'll notice that they, I mean, they're pests to me. I don't like them, but you know, they're they're all in the flowers and doing their job. There was one other thing I wanted to look at here. So uh, this was soil I, you know, reused and collected. So we got a lot of Oh, there's a ladybug there, but so you could see, like we talked about on the last episode, to have things like ladybugs and predatory species, you're going to need the food nearby. So uh, this is something that I'll be removing, but this is a little dandelion and you can see it's covered in aphids. So, I mean, I guess the good thing is they're not on the cannabis plants. Yeah, because just because you have aphids does not mean you're going to get aphids that feed. Um, they're not going to feed on your cannabis because they'll feed on some other plant that might be specialized for. So. Oh yeah, it's covered. Look at that big one there. Yeah, look how big some of these aphids get. <laughs> Actually, I've seen these quite a bit. They seem to, I think they only really feed on like the hawk's beard and dandelions and things mm. like that here. Um, if I was uh, to identify these, they might be oral leucon, I'm not sure. Uh, which are super common on these dandelions. So I guess at first glance that could be alarming to be so close to cannabis, but if anything, it's going to attract uh, attract uh, ladybugs and things like that, and it doesn't seem to be affecting these. Yeah, the ones that are most common on cannabis are like the appropriately named cannabis aphid, forward on cannabis, hmm. and then one really popular one I'm sure you've heard of is the rice root aphid. Okay. Yeah, Ropel siphon rufia dominale. And those, this latter one is a generalist, feeds on all kinds of plants. The first one, though, is a specialist on just cannabis, uh, as far as we know, at this time. Yeah, well, I mean, I definitely have a few more things going on in the space this season. So, you know, between the ground cover and, uh, you know, different seeds that have kind of taken root here, there's a bit more diversity with uh, at least the insect species and plant species I've had in here. What do we got there? That little, that ladybug you were talking about. Oh, but I've, uh, I got it. Yeah, and then, <coughs> oh, there it goes. <laughs> All right, happy camper. It's got some food nearby. Yeah, so I have some citronella I have growing up front. I was thinking about taking some rootings and putting them back here, maybe doing a border around here. But yeah, I think most of what I'm seeing are all these offspring from that big old orb weaver that we got. So yeah, just in this area, I got like 15 or 20 of those. And I've also seen some other ones in here. And like we talked about some of those um, dead flies. I don't, you know, don't uh, love the sight of that on the cannabis plants, but these have all been eaten by spiders. So, uh, you know, you got these webs here. You like flying around, but they're getting caught regularly and eaten. Yeah, where are these spiders there? It's I like to be... make nooks and crannies. These are like sheet web spiders yeah, or something. There. there he is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. So we'll just have to pick out that nest before we smoke this bud later. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I'm in kind of the beginning stages of getting this set for automatic watering, and that'll make it. Uh, a lot easier to work in this space because it is hot and you know especially getting around with all these spiders around kind of gives me the creeps but I know they're helping quite a bit let's see what else do we have in here there's always something new <laughs> oh yeah here's another one here so. yeah that looks very different from the other spider that we were looking at this is more the this is more the speed these like sheet web grass spider types, mm. those are very common. And then I've seen too in the straw bales, there's uh, terrestrial ones that are actually hunting, you know, uh, uh, ambushing and running around and trying to hunt oh, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. So here we got, uh, this is one of the offspring from our orb weaver last season. And it looks like we got a little male right uh, hanging out with her as well. And she's eating one of those June bugs. Yeah, those June beetles, it's July right now. These June beetles are really common here in uh, uh, Southern California. We get them every year just about. 
They're yeah. scarab beetles and they, as adults, they like to feed on the leaves of lots of plants, but I'm not really seeing that kind of damage on cannabis. And to be honest, I don't typically see it here, but they'll feed on all kinds of other plants. And they'll also often feed on like rose petals and, and flower petals and things like that. A lot of uh, uh, tender tissue, but as larvae, they'll eat um, uh, roots in the, in the soil. Okay. Well, I guess uh, once we get those predatory mites and other ladybugs, those will kind of focus on some of our smaller pests, but it looks like this army of spiders has the larger ones covered for the most part. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, that, that, that was the issue I had. I, I have the Azimax and the, the plant therapy and I didn't want to get in there and kill these things if they're helping out. So I've kind of got a little bit of a conundrum, but the rest of these look like they took the treatment quite well. It's just that plant over there looks like it's taking it, uh, you know, got the worst of it. So um, I think in about a week or so, I'll get those predatory mites and we'll do another episode where we release them and see if we can control that population. I think that'll be very, uh, very interesting to watch. It should be easily possible. Yeah, I've, I've never, I've never ordered any of those or used those. I did get some, what do we got here? Oh, there's this. This is the other, or this is the other one we were seeing. See how it's a very different kind of uh, spider here. The other mm. one had kind of a body where it can, it's like more uh, agile and, and, and walkable. But this one, although it can move fast, look at that. Um, it's kind of a more rotund body. So you get all kinds of things out here. There's all kinds of spiders. We shouldn't be afraid of spiders. Yeah, I mean, when you walk through a cobweb, uh, you know, at, at night when I'm doing stuff, spraying the plants down, it's a little disconcerting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you just uh, want to smack them off. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'd rather, even if it costs me one or two of these plants with, to some of these pests, I'd rather try to preserve some of them for this season. So I think that'll be an interesting approach. I'm excited to see how those uh, predatory mites do. Here's another one of those same ones. Yeah, it's a bit more... Almost like a little wolf spider. Or something. Yeah, it kind of has that feel to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, flies and butterflies beware. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll get those ordered and we'll touch base and do another update on that. See yeah. how I do. All right. Well, uh, we'll walk and check out some more bugs and we'll get you guys some more updates on our episode next week. All right. We'll see you guys next time.